Thank God that when my strength fails, that he is, he is my strength. And you are my fortress. And you are the God in whom I trust. I've learned that you've got to confess him in your worst hour, your darkest hour, when you can't see your way out. What you need to do is just speak the name of Jesus, that name that comes with resurrection power, that name that restores hope, that name that releases victory, that name in whom we can hide. Join with me this morning as we look to the word of God. It is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, reading from the NIV version. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. Verse, in fact, let's do verse 9 through 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and the verse 9 through 10. Uh, for the sake of time, we cannot read uh, the chapter, the entire chapter, though it would help you. Uh, but I want you to see here what says the word of God. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, it is be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. King James says, and in the power of his might. In his mighty power. Notice it's not be strong in your strength, but in his mighty power. And then we read from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 through 10. It says, but he said unto me, this is the apostle Paul talking, and we'll exegete this later on. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Watch verse 10. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. That's an oxymoron. I delight in weakness, he says, in insults, watch this, in hardships, and what? In persecutions, in difficulties. And he says the most alarming thing, for he says, for when I am weak, then I am made strong. Then I am strong. But one translation says, then I am made strong. It's indicative of the fact that I was weak before, but as I glorify God through what I'm going through, he strengthens me with supernatural power. I want you this morning as you lean back and open up your heart and your spirit, allow God to encourage you. I want to talk to you about strength that endures or strength to endure. I don't know what you're asking God for, but I don't reckon anybody sitting there this morning asking God for a million dollars. I don't reckon anybody sitting there this morning asking God, hey, listen, I, I need about $5,000 for a good Caribbean vacation. No, but what we need based on what we're facing right now is strength to endure. Lost in a deep meditation regarding Today's presentation, some times ago I inadvertently stumbled upon a brief letter that apparently was intentionally addressed to God, written by an unidentified anonymous spiritual intercessor. And this is what he or she said. Dear God, said this disconsolate parishioner or petitioner, I'm trying my best 
but I need some rest. I'm tired and I'm drained. Will you please renew my emotional, renew my emotional heart? And in fact, my emotional dead heart. Would you restore my mind? Will you breathe life into me? I believe today that this is synonymous with what most people are feeling today. At first glance, when I heard these som somber words, what came to mind initially was this faint-hearted, melancholy, low-down feeling of a desolate, despairing soul. My mind was besieged with this uh, presupposition of someone deeply mired and trapped in a horrible, abysmal sinkhole. Someone who was being blindfolded by uh, a delusive spirit of depression and despair. Uh, nevertheless, after a thorough uh, analyzation of these words, I soon realized that these grievous yet sobering words uh, are indicative of those of us who often find ourselves uh, uh, stranded by the wayside of life, seeking uh, desperately for just another burst of energy to push us over and beyond the point of mental exertion and uh, physical exhaustion. As I began to probe deeply and deeper into this uh, uh, imploratory uh, supplication, I began to realize that this intercessory prayer is a deep inward expression of a believer desperately trying, a man crying out for divine help. Like uh, 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 an inoperable automobile that has run out of fuel and is now stranded on the side of the road. This is the confession of a child of God uh, uh, who feels utterly drained and depleted of the inner strength necessary to continue his or her, her journey. It is a cry of powerlessness, the, the inability to complete one's assignment, uh, the, the uncertainty of wondering if I'll ever survive this to make it to my destiny. Is this the end of the road for me? These are these morbid questions that run through the minds of individuals even today. It is an intense cry of desperation, but it is not a cry of abortion or premature termination. Listen to me today. Because despite what it is that you're experiencing and despite what it is that you see and what it is that you feel, even when you face death in your family, you've got to determine in your mind that nothing will stop me or hinder my faith in God. Hallelujah. I believe that God's going to come Come through for you. It is not a sign of eminent miscarriage. Rather, it is the urgent cry of a struggling worshiper who, for one reason or the other, has become deficient of the enabling strength and power needed to press beyond hindering forces that appears to be more than mere flesh uh, uh, can handle. And so, from the depths of a uh, 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 fatigue a weak and sluggish soul their Lord to thee I cry grant me the strength and the determination to get beyond this this is uh, the message that is being a man interpreted here from this note from this prayer of this wounded hearted believer I want to tell somebody that regardless how strong uh, some of us espouse to be uh, stronger than steel uh, 
tougher than nail irrespective how hard some of us uh, uh, pretend to be stronger than uh, the proverbial iron man uh, like a dry well hallelujah the pressure and challenges of life uh, have a way to consume your passion uh, to exhaust your substance uh, to drain your energy to deplete your vitality uh, to the point where you wound up uh, in a helpless state uh, of exertion and uh, exhaustion Ah, you lead and command an exemplary life. Your lifestyle and conduct are mastered and dominated by, amen, esteemed principles and disciplines of God's infallible word. You try hard to uphold the sacred beliefs of God's infallible word. Hallelujah. The values outlined in the Holy Writ. Your unyielding faith and commitment are a testament that prove you can handle anything that life throws at you but then with all the zeal the zest and the gusto like an inflatable balloon suddenly something comes so terrible something comes that is so terrible wrong something like corona and you find yourself not off of your equilibrium you find yourself out in left field wondering am I going to survive this but I come to tell somebody that he is the resurrection and the life and those that put their trust in him can survive just about anything oh my god ah, this minute you are flying so high seems like you can almost touch the sky the next minute you're falling hopelessly with not one single ounce of energy to break hallelujah to god what is bound to be a deadly tragic fall this moment you have risen uh, to precipitous altitude of public admiration and uh, ovation the next minute you can't even find the strength to pick yourself up hallelujah to god off the ground you are so emotionally and spiritually energy drained i mean hallelujah to god just getting up out of bed amen is a wearisome daunting challenge oh my god have mercy some of you haven't even gone to bed yet stayed up all night long lost sleep worrying about something that you can't change hallelujah from the natural but i come to tell you today that if you cast your cares upon the lord and if you will lift your eyes onto the hills from whence comes your help I dare to tell somebody that God's gonna pick you up uh, don't you dare forget it the songwriter that sang he's got the whole world he's got the whole world in his hands baby nothing happens in this cosmic realm nothing happens in this existential realm that evades the eyes and the mind of God did not you your Bible tells you that even hell, hallelujah, is naked and open before his eyes. I want you to know that he is the ubiquitous God. I want you to know he's the God that is right here and yet he's right there. Oh yes, even over there and around there that nothing passes. The watchful eyes of God and the God who watches over the sparrow I want you to know America I want you to know Africa and Europe that the Lord is watching over you today as well as he'll be watching tomorrow oh my God I feel God in this place I stand before you here today to reassure somebody that anybody who assiduously and vigorously engage in the industrious amen enterprise of life will inadvertently arrive at a frightening place where it feels as if something 
has drained and sucked hallelujah to God your soul dry of every speck of humph I mean of vigor and vivacity hallelujah I mean of the strength and vitality that you have every strength and vitality you have ever had oh come with me and if you fail to depend on God for strength from above you will die the miserable death of a bitter grief stricken powerless soul but I come to tell you this morning God told me to tell you that he will be your strength he will be strength for you in a place where the ground has broken beneath you feels like we're falling beneath the, 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 the great sky and the deep blue sea but in the midst of the chaos in the midst of the crisis I come to tell you he's got you in his hands oh my God look to God and you will live parenthetically I want to remind somebody that exhaustion is not a sign of depletion nor completion are you hearing me just because I'm tired doesn't mean that I am completed it doesn't mean that I am done just because I feel no strength it does not mean hallelujah to God that I'm out of breath as long as I'm breathing I want you to know that I have hope and hear me child of God every now and then you need to take a fresh breath hallelujah somebody you need to breathe the air not of oxygen but the air the breath of God somebody said let him breathe on me that's what we need today we need God to breathe on us the air is polluted with all kind of airborne pollutants that's why government don't want you and me to go outside but I want you to know while we are surrounded by poisonous gases in the air hallelujah that there is one that lives on the inside somebody ought to lift your hands and tell him let him breathe on me Holy Spirit breathe the pneumatic air on the inside of me breathe the breath of life that gives me the ability to survive in a polluted environment breathe on me that gives Gives me the ability to survive when in the, in the invisible realm there is something there is some nano amen force that is trying to take me out but if God is for me and if God belongs to you I want you to know that God will protect you I don't care where it came from whether it came from China it came up out of the sea or it came from a laboratory in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power I declare by the superior name of Jesus Christ that he is a keeper he will keep you as he kept Daniel in the lion's den he will keep you as he kept Hebrew boys up under hallelujah a flame that was turned up seven times hotter he will will preserve you in the midst of what was sent to kill you I come to tell you begin to shout begin to testify over your life I'm a survivor I'm a survivor this thing has come amen like the death chambers hallelujah to God that Hitler lit for the believer but Hitler hallelujah roasted some but he could not destroy a nation I'm here to tell you that some will die but this will not end the world corona is not the end of the world you see corona you see coronavirus like a snake like a serpent crawling towards you but can I tell you ah, that there is the lion of the tribe of Judah that has already crushed the head of the viper he has prevailed and we will prevail I need you to shout in your house and shout I will survive this I'm going to survive this I'm going to beat this I'm going to outlive Corona now I'm not
not standing where I am trying to scream at you where you are. I'm not just trying to motivate you. I'm trying to show you another reality. Because you've been looking at the dark side for too long. But God sent me to tell you that he, baby, is the light of the world. Hallelujah. And as I told you the first week, we may be surrounded, but what's surrounding us, hallelujah to God, is surrounded by the angels of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The reality here, my brothers and sisters, is that the entire world is now caught up in a global crisis. What we are fighting is not physiological, but spiritual. And in, in a minute, most of us will soon realize that it's only the power of God that can enable us to overcome the trials of death and destruction that we are uh, dealing with right now. This tumultuous, uncertain, uh, I mean unrestricted force is so venomous and perilous that it's God's, hallelujah to God, it's God's enabling power God's enabling power and in fact perhaps the only force God's enabling power that can sustain and strengthen us in this dreadful hour I come to tell everybody that's listening to me and you tag it out you, you tag the world on this you share this with the whole wide world I want to tell you that God is still in charge he's still the unmatched supreme ruler and controller the sovereign God of the universe and it's in him that you must put your trust there is a power to which no earthly force no demonic force can attest can challenge it is the power of almighty God truth is the psychological, uh, psychological uh, pleasure is so unbearable, pressure is so unbearable that millions are, are uh, left depleted of their, emotional, uh, of their emotional strength, of their emotional enzymes, of the spiritual uh, antioxidant, the strength and the power necessary to counteract or to fight off the force of death uh, that is coming against us. You have to have a strong immune system to be able to face a force like this. But I want you to know that he will be strength for you. God will strengthen you through this hour. Hasn't he always been your helper? I want you to know that he'll never fail you now. The one, the one person in your life that will never run, cover, or hide. Hallelujah to God. He's not pulling out his hair in frustration, wondering what is happening right now. He knew it was going to happen. He permitted it to happen because he alone, hallelujah, has the infinity the unquestionable the unchallenged power hallelujah to God to destroy the destroyer oh I feel God in here today the truth is hallelujah we are backed up and we're up under the pressure I hate to tell you but unless your hope is entrenched in the subterranean depths of God's power you're gonna have a hard time overcoming the tension the pressure, the trauma, and the terror. Whether you believe it or not, uh, divine strength is going uh, to be the key component uh, during this season. Uh, amen. Of unprecedented testings uh, and trials. Why? Because uh, you're going to have to be strong for this. I come to tell somebody you've got to be strong for this. You've got to be strong in your mind. You've got to be strong in 
your faith. Your family is falling apart. You got children that's trying to decipher through this. Uh, that don't understand what's happening. You got all kinds of unsafe folks around you. That's trying to, amen, get a grip of uh, the uncertainty. Get a grip of the tragedy. Get a grip of this pandemic. And child of God, you got to be strong. All these years that you've been going to church. And all of this word that you've been fed. Now you've got to activate the power of the Lord in you. And you got to speak on behalf of God. You got to become a voice of comfort. You got to become a voice that balances. Hallelujah to God that sets balance between what is happening and what God's getting ready to do. You've got to be strong for this. Some of you, yes, you need to ease up in the bed right now and tap yourself on the shoulder and tell yourself, self, I've got to be strong for this. David had to encourage himself. And I'm telling you right now that you don't have your pastor in front of you in the pew, but you got the Holy Ghost. And he's saying right now, he is the comforter. Oh my God, he is the comforter. Comforter. We need the third person of the Godhead right now. I'm telling you that he will comfort you. You know, that you're facing and then what you're going through right now. But you may never survive until you raise the amplitude of your worship of your faith and stand on the solid rock which is unmovable the reality this is the reality that we are facing here somebody hallelujah you can download God's power on the inside while you're going through what you're going through people are falling apart the reality is people are falling apart even the strength of the believer is failing and falling but I'm here to tell you that before you get to the end of your rope there is a download of God's power that can keep you even when letting go seems like the only viable option the devil is a liar though you feel like dying amen like a bodybuilder on steroids God's power will sustain you beyond the sorrows that fly the arrows that fly by night hallelujah and the pestilence that walk it by day God will keep you and I want you to keep on telling yourself there is power in your mouth life and death is in your t is in the tongue and you got to speak life over you stop talking about this thing is killing me stop talking about I'm not gonna make it stop talking about uh, crying all day long my family members going to die this one's going to die that one's going no 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 do not speak death over your life every morning that we rise since this coronavirus entered, our government and all of the news broadcasters, they have been writing and singing a sad song telling you that millions more will die. Maybe so, but not me. You've got to begin to confess it. Maybe so, but the blood is over my house. The blood is over my doorpost. Hallelujah to God, and death will not come. It may come knocking on my door, but it will not enter. You are barred. Why? Because the blood is upon my soul. The blood is upon my family. Lift your hands and give God praise. The blood of Jesus Christ gives us not just immunity, it gives us permanent security. Hallelujah. Not that we won't die, but not before our time. Hallelujah, somebody. Someone right here, right now, in this place, you are listening uh, to me. Hallelujah to God. You're standing on the line between giving up and seeing how much more you can take. I hear you. You are standing on the precipice. You're standing on the precipitous edge of letting go. Only to discover that boundless depths of resilience and endurance that lies, between, lies in you because of the faith of God that is in you. 
you got to be cognizant of the fact that no weapon, no matter how torrential, no matter how unbearable, no matter how cataclysmic, no matter how hard it comes, the battle, the battle is, it may be eventually every single storm runs out of wind. And runs out of rain. Amidst the swirling vortex of adversities and infirmities. I want you to know no matter how boisterous or furious the winds of terror. Hallelujah to God and hostility are. They will soon die down. They will soon vanish. They will soon leave your life. The blinding rain will soon tamper off to give a way to the, to the rays of the rising sun. Thus, Paul admonishes us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to have, uh, you've got to ha have to be strong for what it is that you're going through. We have no choice about it. Hallelujah. It's do or die. It's be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might but the reality is the truth of the matter is is that in as much as this is recorded in the Bible and that the Bible is God's love letter to us that the Bible is written as an example for all of us that it transcends all age age and dispensation truth of the matter is be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might but I don't always feel strong I'm surrounded by the insurmountable. I'm surrounded with something that threatens to take my life and to end my world. And I don't feel strong right now. But neither did Jesus. Jesus never felt strong all the time. Oh, now you question my theology. Well, let's go to the garden when he knelt down to pray. And the burden of the world was up on his shoulder and he felt the brunt of it until it caused Jesus to question if it be possible he says let this cup pass from me yeah Jesus didn't always feel strong even though he was God he had to put aside his divinity to feel and to suffer the pain that humanity suffered and he didn't always feel strong while he was living as a man. That is the reason why the Bible says that on his way to Golgotha, on his way to pay the highest price, on his way to, to pay the ransom price, the atonement for you and for me, that Jesus fell under the weight of the cross. It meant that physically he didn't feel strong. But you've got to know that your spirit has, the strength of your spirit has got to transcend physical strength. And I might be weak physically, but nothing can stop me if my faith is in the Lord and if my spirit is strong. If my spirit which is eternal is unbeatable, then there is no earthly physiological force. Uh, that can break me it might bend me physically but it cannot stop me spiritually ah, because my hope is built on the Lord oh come with me we need the power of the almighty hallelujah to God don't get it twisted I'm not talking about uh, religious excitement uh, that is designed for public exhibition I'm not talking about uh, I'm talking talking about the supernatural manifestation of God's power and strength strength that comes underneath you hallelujah to embrace and to empower you strength that comes to hold you hallelujah in the midst of fallen circumstances ah the supernatural power of God ah that strength to endure strength that overpowers and conquers strength that sustains hallelujah and prevails strength that triumphs against all odds against principalities against powers and rulers of darkness strength that is relentless strength that is unstoppable strength that is victorious hallelujah to God when faced
face the vicissitudes of life I want to let you know that he'll be your strength that kind of strength that is able to crush opposition that is able to annihilate the forces of evil that comes of the strength of the living God that comes to give you life he'll be your strength do not rely on your own strength do not rely on your physical pulchritude do not rely on your physical strength nor should you rely <coughs> nor should you rely on your mental stability I don't care how wise you are I don't care how perspicacious you are perceptive you are you cannot fight what has been roaming through the earth with your own strength you need you and me we need the strength of God there are so many up under the sound of my voice today who are left it seems as though they are left psychologically traumatized and immobilized confined to a place of mental paralysis unable to cope with the pressures of life you are emotionally and psychologically depleted and uh, you are drained but psalms 29 and 11 lest you think i'm just speaking from my head ah psalms 29 and 11 assures us that the lord gives strength to his people for oh my god for you who feels totally power powerless those of you that feel totally powerless as if your strength and your vitality is gone psalm 68 and verse 35 write it down reaffirms that the god of israel gives strength and power to his people you may have lost the courage and the resilience to withstand uh, the violent, tempestuous turbulence of a global pandemic. But I, oh my God, I, I like what the psalmist says in chapter 73 and 26. He says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God that we serve his fidelity is not just temporary like some folk you know when everything is up and everybody is feeling a sense of jubilation they will be around but when troubles like these come and nobody want to come close to nobody anymore because everybody now is a suspect everybody got something on them that's trying to kill others so, so you are treated yourself like a virus. But I come to tell you that God's not like that. Huh. Even when uh, the lepers, they stayed away from the lepers. Don't go close to those folk. They are contaminated and if you go, do go around them, it's so potent that you yourself can become a victim. But Jesus, welcome Hallelujah to God. Jesus welcomed those who were diseased and those who were beyond the scope of help, of healing and redemption. Why? Because he is the redeemer. I come to tell you today that he will never leave you and he'll never leave you in the condition that you're in. It is here now that we are reminded by 2 Corinthians chapter 12 because we find out here that the Apostle Paul, he is struggling through one of uh, life's most oppressive experience that he's ever had to deal with. And all of us have those days. In fact, all of us are dealing with one right now. Wherever you are, whether you are in a mansion or you live down the street under a bridge. Hallelujah to God. It is as if Corona is looking for you and it's looking for us hallelujah to God but but we those that are sheltered in the Lord uh, Paul lets us know that we have immunity we have coverage in God and you've got to raise your faith because the enemy cannot devour you the enemy cannot tear you down if your faith is built up in God 
You better hear me when I talk to you today. So the word of God tells us that Paul, he's caught in one of these adversarial perils. And uh, uh, he's struggling and suffering with this condition, what he calls a thorn in the flesh. He knows that it has the ability to completely devour him and he knows where it comes from. He realized that it was not of natural origin. And so he begins to cry out to God. Why? Because he tells us that an enemy sent from Satan came to buffet him. Ah, this thing has come to buffet us. This thing has come not to just bring shame and infamy on us. This thing has come to slip into our families and rob us of the most most valuable people to our lives to our hearts this thing has come to steal our very lives this thing has come to end our dreams hallelujah to put our hopes to rest but I come to tell you according to the word of God hallelujah that you gotta take it to the Lord in prayer the Bible said that Paul went to praying about the thorn in his flesh this thing that has come to tear down his house oh my God in heaven and and in prayer, God answered him. And God always answers us. Oh my God, even if you don't hear him or cannot perceive him, God answers us. And uh, the Lord said something to Paul that was very peculiar. And may be peculiar to you right now. Because you are asking the question, why God? Why did you allow this thing to come on our side? Why didn't you not keep it across the border? Why didn't you not keep it where it started? Why did you not build hallelujah a barricade so it doesn't cross the Asian Sea? But I come to tell somebody he said because I built an edge around you. Oh come on here somebody. Uh, he responded to Paul and he says Paul says he said, he said this to him he said but my grace come on somebody my grace is sufficient Efficient for you and my power is made perfect it's made perfect in weakness you got to understand what he's saying Paul you are facing a grievous situation but I've got the remedy for your grief it's a thing called grace it's not just grace come on somebody it's not just something that you don't deserve it is my divine covering it is divine protection he says my grace Grace is sufficient. My grace is adequate to deal with whatever force that is trying to fight you. To deal with whatever force is trying to debilitate. Is trying to harm. Is trying to destroy your house. Is trying to destroy your family. And trying to destroy your soul. God says I've already implanted something inside of you. It's called grace. Amazing in grace how sweet the sound that save a rich like me that grace is saving you from corona that grace is saving you from diseases didn't he say no harm no danger no pestilence will come now your dwelling you say well preacher preacher why is it then that there are preachers that are dying from corona you think they're dying they're only transitioning they're crossing over hallelujah to God they're walking on the streets of gold some are receiving early retirement I tell you who is dying it's those that do not know him it's those who have not given their lives to him it's those that are living recklessly cursing God defying his authority looking hallelujah to this world rather than to him come on somebody when they die they don't die physically but you die spiritually hallelujah to God you'll never know peace if you die without Christ you'll never again know joy if you die without Christ the only hope hallelujah for your life and mine is to plant yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ You don't understand what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. It is divine grace why we can declare that we are saved. 
The Bible not just say that we are saint, we are saved, but we are called saints. Yes, yes. Because there's a divine shelter, a divine covering that is in the Lord. When you say yes to him, he covers you with his presence and his grace. So that even though you are deteriorating on the outside like a rotted building. Or a building that is susceptible to demolition. Susceptible to the, the forces and the elements of inclement weather. Even though it's being torn apart. Splintered to smithereens. Yet because Christ lives on the inside in my spirit. Then even though this tabernacle falls to the earth and dissolves, <laughs> we live forever under the security and the peace of God in his eternal dwelling. What an incredible word of God he brings to us this morning. In the midst of Paul's defying circumstances, deadly calamities with implications Beyond imagination. The Lord says to him, hey, listen, don't worry, man, I got you. My grace is sufficient. America, Europe, wherever you are, God says my grace is sufficient to keep you. And even though you're going through a storm, if you will trust him, God will bring you through it. Some of you right here, right now where I'm talking, Right from your room, from your living room. You've already been cured of corona. You've beat it already. Beaten it already. Yes, you have. And you got a testimony. I can't wait for us to come back to get together to hear the many testimonies that folks are going to tell because of God's healing power and God's healing virtue. I got to be careful when I'm, what I'm about to tell you. But I'll tell you this. Just because you have a cough, or you have a headache. Don't be stupid and go to the hospital. Just merely on that. Don't act like. This is. This is uh, uh, we are in a climate. Where there is no. Uh, there can be no flu. There can be. Uh, no more cold. Come on here. Some of you just have a little cough. And you're rushing to the hospital so that they can render you coronavirus candidate. Lock you up in a room where everybody else has coronavirus. And before you leave, there you are, contaminated. Would you exercise your faith? Get up in the morning, they're locking you up in a house. And they're not telling you how you can build your immune system. If Corona wants you to come right to that house and get you, listen to me. Get yourself every single morning some garlic and some lemon, some honey, yes, yeah, some uh, some turmeric, some 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 hot pepper, cayenne pepper, and mix that stuff up and drink it twice a day, a quarter of a cup. I'm not telling you it's going to heal you. I'm telling you it's an immune builder. And it will build your immune. Some of you just need to build your immune system and trust God for healing. They don't have the virus anyway, uh, the, 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 the vaccine anyway. And there are some natural remedies that God has given to us from the earth like garlic. Don't like how it smells and I don't like how it, how it makes me feel. But baby, it's doing the body good. Use some common sense. All of us are not going to die. Some of us that trust in God will have to live to memorialize those who are gone. I want you to hear me this morning. I want you to hear me. Therefore, he says, Paul then says this. God says, I will I'll protect you. He says, my grace is sufficient. And notice what else he says. He says, for my power is made perfect He's made perfect in weakness. That is baffling to me. His power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, my conclusion is, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. Come on, saints of God. This seems oxymoron, an oxymoron. But you got to understand that faith is asymmetric 
to um, symmetrical to uh, to uh, uh, to how the natural thinking of man. We don't find any pleasure in weakness, but Paul teaches us that there is power that comes out of weakness. Therefore, I will boast the more gladly about my 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 uh, about my weakness. Do not allow this thing to steal your joy. And got you all day long imprisoned and restricted so that you cannot even pray. Use the opportunity that God has given to us. Hallelujah. In isolation, you don't have to be separated from God. You can get close to God. It's time to get close to him. And the closer you get, I want you to know, the more of God will rub off on you. He said, I will gladly rejoice in the Lord. And he says, I will delight in weakness. I'll delight myself in insults in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then am I made strong. Now if the power of God made per is made perfect in weakness, then the experience of weakness is crucial for anyone who wants to experience the power of God. Ah, for one cannot experience the full magnitude of divine omnipotence. That is God's power without undergoing the tyranny hallelujah the agony and the infamy of weakness hallelujah somebody in, in, in a paradoxical sense weakness is the proverbial gateway that unveils the power of God for as the scripture outlines he says when I'm weak when I'm at my lowest end when I'm at the point of no return when I'm at my extremities hallelujah Hallelujah to God. When I'm weak, he says, then am I made, hallelujah to God, strong. It is at that point when I've reached my humanity, then am I made strong. Why? Because I'm depleted of physical strength. I'm depleted of mental strength. But now God steps in to fortify my mind. He steps in to fortify my heart and now I have the resilience I have the strength to face every trial and to move on someone says I feel like I'm falling apart I feel like everything is failing oh my God well then listen to what the Lord says to Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 25 he said I don't want a lot of scriptures now and uh what would you want? Because the only cure right now to what we're going through is the word of God. He knows what is happening now and gave us the remedy centuries ago. He says to Jeremiah, says to Jeremiah like he says to you and I in chapter 31 and verse 25, he says, I will refresh the weary. I will satisfy the faint. In other words, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you satisfied uh, in faith. I'm going to make you strong in this. This thing that you're now facing, God says, I'm going to make you strong in it. Isaiah 40 and verse 29, I like how it italicizes this in a more definitive way. And what he says is, he points out that God gives power to the weak. And he increases the strength of the powerless. So at a point in which you feel that there, that all strength is gone. Hallelujah to God. He says, I will intensify strength. Hallelujah to God in you. I, in other words, I will take from me. Hallelujah. And deposit in you. So that it becomes a mystery. Why everybody else around you is dying. And here you are running into it day after after day as a healthcare worker you are surrounded and bombarded by it but here you are you're still surviving hallelujah
you not even with a good mask but I come to tell somebody that he will keep you he is your keeper may Jehovah Gabor invigorate your mind may Jehovah Gabor amplify and overload your soul may he supercharge and electrify your spirit with spirit filled strength hallelujah to press over hallelujah to God bless your way through whatever current realities is trying to get you and whatever you're trying to get over until we come out victoriously on the other side of a global pandemic come on somebody would you shout right where you are God I need your strength I tried everything and everything has already failed but I know that you're there for me you will hold me in the palm of your hands hear the voice of our Savior in Isaiah chapter 41 and one of my favorite verse verse 10 he says so do not be afraid do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you God says I will help you God says I will uphold you with my righteous right hand you're in his hands I come to tell somebody that the winds are blowing but I'm in his hands I come to tell you that there's a storm on board there's turbulence all around me the ground is breaking around me and I'm surrounded by death but I'm in his hands and yea though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death I refuse to fear that which is that which is weaker than God's power I refuse to fear for the Lord is with me when you get to the point brothers and sisters of powerlessness you will find that he will be your strength there are certain trials there are certain battles that we sometimes face and no matter how long and hard you fight you will never defeat it or experience victory until you are supernaturally overpowered by the mighty hand of the Lord there are certain tribulations and afflictions you can only survive if God strengthens you if he strengthens you in it until he delivers you from it uh, what if it allows this thing to last for a while what if he allows this thing to go beyond the end of April and what if it goes into May and June are you going to just capitulate will you just surrender will you just begin to call on God and ask God to let you die oh come on here you got a purpose on this earth and God will give you strength for the rest of the journey are you hearing me yes yes God is going to give you strength for the rest of the journey oh I feel you in here Lord his supernatural power you will experience victory because his supernatural power hallelujah and his might will sustain you there are certain things that you cannot overcome without the power of almighty God I want you to know that God's got you hallelujah God's got a way to lift your burdens and to provide strength to put 10,000 to flight and so now that you're facing a sense of powerlessness you're going to have to rely on God let me close off by telling you about David David one of the most intrepid one of the most fearless warrior the world has ever known but even those who feel as though they are invincible find themselves that sometimes in this life facing an enemy, a force that is stronger than you are. A force that transcends flesh. David found himself in this very state during the disaster uh, at the place called Ziklag. David and his men went out to fight in another battle. And while he's fighting another battle, sadly, they returned to find that another 
army, invading army, came into their camp, took their families along with all the other families of the army, and they took them into captivity. Mm -hmm. Watch here. Watch here what is happening. David and his men, they are trapped in captivity. And when you find yourself in a state like we are in, it's God, I need your strength. I need somebody to see this. The invading army, they wiped out the entire camp, leaving behind a trail of desolation and delusion and nothing but despair. The Bible tells us that David uh, himself found uh, himself in a bad situation. Hallelujah to God. He's in a situation that seems like there is no escape whatsoever. Why it is? Because mutiny came up in the camp. And uh, David's men are now blaming him. They're contemplating stoning him. Uh, there's nothing but bitterness and death and destruction everywhere. All that is left is not the burning amber, but, the, but the, just the dust, just the smoke that's coming up from what's left. They burned their tents and they burned their dwelling and now they're left homeless in just one day. Oh my God, have mercy. Uh, they, uh, there's a bit of conspiracy because now the other soldiers that are David's men, they are planning to destroy David because they are blaming him, hallelujah, because of the loss of their family. When people become frustrated, when people are hurt, when people are broken hearted, uh, when people become emotionally disturbed, they begin to blame others. Uh, David is in a domestic crisis. Uh, he is living in a crisis and how is he going to get out of this? Uh, his entire support team has conspired against him. This was more than what uh, even a warrior like David could handle. And whenever you come face to face with a force uh, uh, that exceeds human strength, uh, the only way to defeat it uh, is to tap into the power our source that is superior hallelujah to God to that of your attacker in other words you have to draw strength from the power source that is inherently superior to that of your opponents you need God's strength to make it through what it is that we're going through in the midst of mutiny and impending destruction first Samuel chapter 30 and 6 says this but David found strength in the Lord his God. Are you hearing me somebody? When all have deserted, deserted you, you can find strength in the Lord. God not only gave David the courage to resist the adversary, he gave him power to be triumphant in a battle that by himself he could not win. By God's strength we will survive Corona I will survive it you got to begin to tell yourself I will survive it child of God when you get to this point of weakness when the host of hell comes against you and you are rendered powerlessly you don't need to give up you don't need to let go what you need is power from on high hallelujah to God you got to tell God hallelujah I need your strength to make it through this I'm not trying to bypass the lessons that we must learn from our struggles but if you're going to get the glory God if you're going to get the glory out of this God you've got to give me strength to endure this battle that's what you got to pray you got to ask God for strength you got to tell him precious Lord you got to take my hands and you got to lead me out of this I'm in a bad shape right about now and I don't need sympathy but I'm asking for endurance 
more in strength, hallelujah, to suffer if I must, but to suffer with honor and with dignity when my back is against the wall and it looks like, hallelujah to God, it's all over. God, you've got to give me strength. i got to have strength to withstand the attacks, hallelujah to God of the evil one. I need strength that endures until the trial ends. Yes, yes. It is here now under these extreme difficult circumstances that the apostle says to us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Paul brings to our attention that when our lives are bombarded by unbearable conditions that leaves us drained, depleted, and powerless. And you are at the breaking point. What you need is a shot of something stronger than liquor. Right now, somebody is being driven to drink. But I'm telling you that what you need is not a shot of heroin. It's not a shot of uh, codeine. It's not a shot of, Pro, uh, uh, of uh, Prozac. You don't even need a sip of Corona. Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. What you need is a full pneumatic surge of the Pentecostal power rushing through your veins. Losing hope, relinquishing your faith in God that has kept you over the years will not change your condition or reverse the outcome. What we need is divine energy to make it to the end of this killing spree. God, I need your strength. As vicious as your trials may be, as unbearable and deplorable as it often feels, some of you, I see your tears. I hear your cries. And you don't feel like even lifting a pinky finger to praise God. But I'm here to tell you that even though you have lost loved ones, and even though right now you're contemplating the future of a relative that might be in the hospital, of a mother that left to work today to take care of those who are dying, not knowing if she herself will come back home scotch-free. I know. I hear you. But I come to tell you, he'll be strength for you. And he'll be strength for your mama. And he'll be strength for your little brother. Hallelujah to God. That right now is in the hospital. Hooked up to machines that might not help him. But God will help him. I want you to raise your faith. You're going to call me and give me that testimony. I'm telling you right now. I speak life over your relatives. I speak life over your friends. And I decree and declare that they shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And it's amen. It's amen. It's amen. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that may God inject you with supernatural strength to keep you. To keep you. Somebody need to hear me. You need this word. You prayed today. You determined that you were going to give up if God let your relative die. But I come to tell you, you can still trust God. He'll be faithful to you and he'll hold on to you and he'll keep you to the end. Let me leave you with one story. One personal story. Here it is. I remember an incident that occurred right here in an all-night prayer meeting many years ago. When after about three hours of intense prayer, my son suddenly passed out and was irresponsive. In a fit of panic, folks began talking about calling 911. I picked up my boy up in my arms as I sat right here on this altar began to pray, began to pray on to God, calling him to intercede, to, to inter, intercept 
the obstruction of the enemy. And the Lord Jesus spoke to me. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. said, give him some orange juice while we were praying. And quickly, we poured orange juice down his throat. And within seconds, my son was revivified. Stood up. And not only walked out of here in his own strength. He's standing today. Over 32 years, 31 years old. Married. And with a child. I'm telling you that God has the power to put you back on your feet again. And no matter how faintish you may feel, no matter how weak you may be, feel like your strength is gone, I got to tell you that God is able to lift you up, that God is able to heal you, that everything that you have committed unto him, he's able to. He's able, he's able to restore you. Right now, right where you are, bow your heads with me. Right where you are, I have to by faith. This is how faith happens. I cannot see you behind these cameras. I cannot see you in your house, but I know that you are watching. I know that in obedience you are bowing down. And just as how I believe in you this morning. That's how much faith you got to have in God. That when we pray, that God's going to touch your body. That God's going to heal you. That God's going to give you a set of peace where there is nothing but turmoil and, and pain and uncertainty and sorrow and stress and worry. But right where you are, bow on your knees. Call your family together. Throw your arms around them. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. And we put our families into your hands right now. God, you've seen those children and you've seen that mother, you've seen that father. You've seen families all across this country, all around the world today that's in grief and pain, wondering how they're going to get out of this. But this just didn't happen in a vacuum. Your unseen eyes is up on us. And the God who watches over the sparrow I know that you're able to take care of us. So may you inject your children today with faith and with hope and with peace and grant them the ability to trust you where they can trace you. Right now, Father, as I speak, I pray that upon my hands you will lay your hands and by faith we walk into those rooms today. We walk into those unidentified places. We walk into those unseen places and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you may overturn the powers and the plans of the enemy. We pray God in heaven many might be the plans O oh God of man but it is only the plans of God that will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right where they they are today. Somebody standing in the need of prayer. Somebody need a touch from God. Somebody need hope today. Somebody need the peace of God upon their lives. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke stress. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that negative thinking right now. And I release the power of God for healing. The power of God for deliverance. I speak to Corona. I command that spirit to die in the name of Jesus. You will survive you will stand tall as a matter of fact you stand and lift your hands and shake yourself and that fever is leaving your body right now for the spirit of God is contending with it the spirit of God is contending with it that fever is leaving your body that trouble is leaving your mind you shall not die be healed by the power of God by God's son by the power of Jesus Christ be healed in your body I command you to breathe. I command you to take a whiff of fresh air tonight, today in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing you right now. Open up your mouth and begin to say thank you Jesus. Begin to tell him Father, I thank you that you are Lord and you are God. That you're higher than the highest, you're greater than the greatest. And no one can challenge you. Begin to tell him, Father, I know that I'm in your hands. I know I'm safe and secure by the blood of Jesus Christ. And today, I thank you for forgiving me. 
I thank you for rescuing me from a life of sin. I give myself to you. This body is your temple. Hallelujah to God. And therefore, if your spirit lives inside of me, then neither can a virus. So in the name of Jesus, purify me. In the name of Jesus, purge me. Father, in the name of Jesus, they have not the remedy, but Jesus Christ's blood is the vaccine that I need. Vaccinate, inoculate my body from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet I cover my children I cover my family in the name of Jesus even my unbelieving family I cover my co-workers in fact I cover my neighbors stretch your hands towards the window or the door I cover my neighbors in the name of Jesus and I sanctify this place I decree, decree that corona will not touch us I decree that I shall survive this by the power of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray and tell him, I thank you, Lord, that you're working it out right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're fixing it for me. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing everything that's connected to me. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare like the ten leper that I am a whole that I am healed that I am delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ worship him right where you are worship him right where you are yes I can't see you but he sees you and the worship is not for me the worship belongs to him worship him right where you are right now listen I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Holy Spirit just showed me the, the presence of the Lord just walked inside your house. And you will feel the invigorating power of God that even when I put this mic down, get off, get off line. His presence and his power will be upon you in so much that you're going to have to pick up that phone and call us and tell us about your experience. I want you to document your testimony. Because how God is touching you right now and healing you right now, somebody else is going to need it. Somebody else is going to be encouraged by it. Before this is all over, you'll have to call your neighbor. You will have to call somebody and tell them, he delivered me. He will deliver you too. I thank you for allowing me to come into your homes. I thank you for allowing me to share with you what God has given me for you and the word of God. It's good medicine for the soul. I want you to meditate upon these scriptures I gave you today. And I want you to choose to rejoice. Do not allow anxiety to tear you apart. We're living in a turbulent time. But I want you to know that the glory of God and the power of God has never changed. And even right now, you can rejoice in him. Rejoice in the Lord, as the Bible tells us. And again, I say rejoice.